Okay. okay. I, I can't wait till we get a copyright strike from Lamore singing something too close. From I, for me, I am, I'm going to have the copyright strike against yeah. myself. All right, so even. first up. First up, um, you wanted this. Uh, this is pretty handy. A lot yes. of people have USB-C laptops, oh, yeah. and they want to read. Well, you know, now there's the um, new MacBooks that have a micro oh, there is. SD, SD slot. But if you have an older computer, uh, plug this in. So the, this one is... It's a little bit more expensive than most, but it's high speed. It's it's not the yeah. old slow, you know, slow speed USB 2.0. It's like whatever USB C speed. Um, it'll be as fast as the SD card lets you write, and that's very handy when you're burning a lot of uh, Raspberry Pi SD cards. So I like this. Um, of course, it goes either way. It has a little keychain. Um, it's nice and durable, um, and it's fast. Mm. All right, next up. Next up, this is from Elki. Um, they make uh, soldering kits and. My whole thing now is if I'm going to have a soldering kit, first of all, it has to look really cool. And it has to be something that you want to keep after the fact. So this is a yeah. beautifully designed Art Deco cat kit. Um, it's and it's lamp. break apart PCBs that you solder together. And you solder together the big tabs to hold the thing together. And then there is a little bit of circuitry you can see in the middle. This is what it looks like. Um, you get the PCB and then you, know, you, you, you break it apart. Uh, here's another good image. So you can see the whole, the whole kit is, is quite nice. Um, so you do need soldering iron, um, diagonal cutters, and yeah. uh, solder to put it together. But. I agree, because a lot of soldering kits, it's like, okay, now I just have a green square. Yeah, I yeah, did yeah, it. Green this square. is but like, this no, is really you have a cat lamp. It's really, this is so beautiful. Um, they did a really lovely job. It's got a little bit of, you know, it's a little, you know, it reminds me a little bit of like, you know, an art deco uh, kimono design. Um, so you've got these beautiful yes. gold elements here and flowers, and then um, this cute cat. And then there's a uh, sensor, wait, there's an on-off switch, which I really like, so you can turn it on or off. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets dark, um, this LED turns on. So it's a very simple little lamp, um, but I think it's a, it's a beautiful first soldering kit. And if you're gonna put together a soldering kit, um, mm -hmm. this one is very elegant and nice, and you'll enjoy having it on your desk. It's, Here, it's quite I'll, beautiful. Hold it up so you can see how big oh. it is in, uh, Sorry. in uh, the hands and then in the... Uh, one second, yeah. sorry. The There's just... Next to you, Min, so hold on. Okay. La. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's desk-sized. It's like, you know, the size of a coffee cup or so. Um, and it's very simple put together, but it's, uh, it's very beautiful. So um, they did a really good job, and I think um, it's a really nice gift. It's a good, like, uh, this is a good stocking stuff. We should add it to our yeah. gift guides for stocking stuff. Add it now, because, like, who knows what's going to happen in December. Yeah. Okay, um, next up we have... The Pico system. Okay, so Pimeroni, um, they worked really hard on this for a really long time, and they finally um, have come out with um, their handheld gaming system based on the RP2040. Um, and uh, this is it's really well made. It's really beautiful with an anodized aluminum case and a rechargeable battery, and it's got the RP2040 inside. It's a dual core uh, Cortex M0 chip. Um, got a D-pad. It's got a piezo speaker. It's got the four buttons. 240 by 240, uh, I think 1.3 inch IPS screen. Um, it's just really beautiful. It's got a little uh, buzzer to make noise. So maybe let's go to the uh, overhead. I can show this off. So the idea behind this is that you'll actually uh, program it in um, MicroPython. Uh, there is a CircuitPython build, although the, the tutorials and the, the graphical system um, designed for it is in MicroPython. Um, and you can, you know, program sprites and, and sound effects and stuff. It's definitely got like, you know, it's, it's 240 by 240, so it's a square display. It's got a real Pico 8 feel to it. Um, you know, I actually started writing a long time ago a Pico 8 parser for Arduino, so it would be interesting if somebody, I wanted to pick that up and, and finish porting it. Um, but it's really beautiful. It's got this, uh, you know, routed PCB on the top and um, a strong anodized aluminum case on off and then programming and recharging over USB-C. So it's, it's really adorable. Um, I think, you know, this is one of the nicest, you know, handheld DIY gaming platforms. It's definitely um, small and cute, um, but comfortable to play. Um, you know, they got the nice rounded corners down here. And a little bit of the, the Pi Gamer. Hopefully they, they were, they learned something from my design for the Pi Gamer. Um, they got the, the same kind of low, uh, you know, sm small radius here, low radius here, for it's, it's very handy to hold. And uh, they figured out how to do the D-pad and buttons, which is something that uh, it, it's quite challenging. Um, but, you know, with, with really good machining, you can um, make a very usable um, control interface. So 
You want to learn how to code games. Um, you want it to be in color. You don't need a crank. Recommend the Pico system. All right, next up. And speaking of Raspberry Pi stuff, the next round. There's a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff. So here we go. Okay, so Raspberry Pi build hat. So we actually talked about this before, but now it's in stock. So this uh, hat fits on top of the Raspberry Pi and um, lets you um, control the latest generation of Mindstorms robotics and sensors. It's got four ports. The power supply, we don't have the official power supply in stock yet, but we do have a power supply that can be like, it's adjustable, it can be dialed to eight volts um, and plugged in so you can you know, use the, the Adafruit uh, power supply if you want to get this build hat. And then control Lego robots. It's kind of interesting because um, you know, the, whatever protocol and interface, they've written a Python library and they've co collaborated with um, Lego to make sure it's compatible and they've got the right connector. So I think if you want to make you know, your Lego robotics, but like do a lot more with it, maybe even make it internet connected, use the Raspberry Pi camera, do machine learning and TensorFlow, you can actually do that now because there's this Python library that you can interface instead of trying to, you know, trying to do whatever you want with the official Lego controller, which is wonderful, but it's just not as programmable as a Raspberry Pi, not as flexible. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, um, this is the Pi Cam. This is a really interesting, you know, this is a, a kind of a single serving product, but the thing it does is it's quite useful. So you program, uh, you can plug in a um, Raspberry Pi for um, compute module onto the back. So this is the compute module here, the Raspberry Pi, Pi 4 compute module. And this one happens to have Wi-Fi and uh, flash memory, but it you know, doesn't necessarily be, it can be any of them. And then you bolt this on and then you can connect a camera on. And it, that's kind of all it does. You get the power and USB debug port. So you can load you know, the MMC flash, um, but it's really just meant to hold a camera and you can make little camera projects that are the power of Raspberry Pi 4. So again, good for machine learning or TensorFlow or um, you know, detection stuff where you want to have IoT projects that use camera, maybe um, make a webcam or um, detect something and then maybe read some sensor data, you know, who knows? Um, that is a good use for this project because there is the IO control board for the, the compute module, but it's just massive. Uh, maybe you don't need that. Maybe you need something a little bit smaller. So this is nice and compact. I have kind of a large um, cable here, but of course you can have a much smaller FPC cable if you want this to be a compact package. It doesn't come with the camera in the compute module. You have to add that. So this is just the adapter board. Okay, and then uh, start the show tonight, you, Lady Ada, uh, besides our team, our community, our customers, and our staff, and everyone working behind the scenes, is the Raspberry Pi W2. Yes. Oh, you know, I was, like, during the break, I was supposed to put some... We're well, going to put a couple in stock. If you're watching this live, um, oh, yeah. so in about five... What, when we go to the next video, I'll, I'll quickly yeah. put... Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about this, and then when we start to line up stuff for... Uh, when I play videos for Top Secret, I'll play yeah. two back to back. Then I'll go and I'll yeah. Do it. So these are about to go in the store. We saved just a few. I just saved a couple for the live show right live now. Show they'll be gone instantly. Yeah. So get ready. Um, okay. So the pie, pie. Okay, but if you're not watching live, um, they're probably not in stock because uh, we sold that very quickly. So yeah. the Pi Zero Two W, uh, which came out last Thursday at two a.m., so we were up late. Um, you know, this chip basically has the form factor of the Pi Zero, so it has the same. You know, two micro USB ports, can do gadget mode, has HDMI, has the micro SD, has the little camera slot, has a 2x20 GPIO. It fits in all the camera, it's in all the cases for the Raspberry Pi Zero, but it has the computational power of the Pi 3B Plus. So it's a quad core processor. Um, it's got, I think, 512 megabytes of RAM. And of course, the, you know, the memory is whatever um, micro SD card slot, you know, you, whatever you can fit inside. And it's got, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and it's under a tin, so they, it can be uh, more easily integrated into products that need a shielded um, you know, Wi-Fi for FCC or CE compliance. Um, but basically, it's like you want a Raspberry Pi that's about, it's like five, six times faster than the Pi Zero um, W, and it's about the same price. This is a great upgrade. And I'll say, you know, uh, if you're watching this in around two, 2021, um, there aren't going to be Pi Zeros for quite a bit. Um, you know, there's, there's a silicon shortage, and I think they're focusing a lot on trying to get the Pi 4s out. Um, but if you do want a Pi Zero, uh, this version of the Pi Zero is probably going to be the one that's you know, going to be replacing the old 
you know, zero one W and the zero one, which, you know, most people do want Wi-Fi. They do want more computational power. So, you know, 15 bucks is a really great deal. It's basically a Pi 2, but, or Pi 3 B+, plus, but really small. Yeah. Um, and of course it works with all of our CircuitPython libraries and it's great for, um, you can do some very, not like super tensor flow, but you can do some basic machine learning on it as well. All right, that's new products. Yay, new, 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 new. Okay, I'm